So it's been requested quite a fair bit. Today, I bring you Mourinho's Chelsea 4 3 3. It's an absolutely incredible tactic and a lot of fun making him. Mourinho is, fun fact, one of my favourite managers ever in football. I love the way he plays the dark side of the game. If you guys do enjoy the tactics of this channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're pushing for 20k and we are nearly there. But let's get into the testing phase and hopefully you enjoy today's video. We're going to kick things off with arguably the most challenging team. That is going to be the current Chelsea team. Although they've got some fantastic players, some some would argue a bit overkill in terms of the options you have. It's quite hard to actually pick a certain player and lock them in that team. And we actually enjoyed quite a fair good season. I'm not sure where they are predicted to finish inside of FM. Definitely not first one. We have done that. I will say I've seen the comments and I, I've seen a lot of people say, go more realism of the tactics, Josh. Don't worry about as much of the results. So I've replicated this as much as I physically can. So any suggestions which you think I could have done better, feel free to comment. But in my opinion, this is very, very accurate. The Premier League champions, we're going to take that and also the FA Cup against Manchester United. Unfortunately, the Carabao Cup, we couldn't get it done as Aston Villa appeared to be a little bit too strong on the day. 91 goals scored in the league, which does surprise me because with a Mourinho tactic, you're not always expecting to score loads and loads of goals, but a bit of an off-season for the rest of the teams when it comes to scoring the goals. Only 24 goals conceded. I was expecting this because it's a Mourinho defensive masterclass at the end of the day. Christopher Nkunku picks up 21 goals in the season. Ben Chilwell 7.54 with the highest average rating. And Rhys James picking up 15 assists. So a very good season from him. It wasn't a flawless season. We didn't win every game. We won 27, drew 4 and lost 7. So by no means the perfect, perfect season. But we got the job done. And we've got to take it. Team stat wise, we are going to feature in quite a fair few of them. The most points per game at 2.24. The most goals at 91. The most shots for at 617. The fewer shots against at 211. So very good there defensively when it comes to faces and shots against us. Dribbles made. Very progressive. 770. The fewest conceded at 24. Very close tied with Arsenal. And also the most clean sheets coming in at 23. So very good over the entire season. Now going over to that data hub, it's going to be 2.39 goals per game. We're never going to be expecting to score four plus goals a game with a Mourinho system. So we're going to take that and run with it. Only 0.63 conceded, very defensively solid. Just over 16 shots every single game as well. A 90% pass completion, which is beautiful to see. And a tackle win ratio of 78.13. It's fair to say we cooked with this Chelsea team. Then go and test one of the retro databases. And of course, this is going to be a real throwback for the Chelsea fans. Your John Terry's, your Etos, your Hazards, your Ramirez. Mirez, your Gary Cahills, Obi Mikel, David Luiz, some absolute ballers there. And again, although we didn't win the Premier League, which does surprise me as Tottenham win the Premier League, um, we'll be sure to look at their team in a second. Very interesting scenes. We do win the quadruple, so although we didn't win the Premier League, we win the Champions League against Bayern, the Super Cup against Bayern, the FA Cup against Hull, and the Capital One Cup against Arsenal. The fifth best at scoring goals, I'm not going to hide the fact this is not going to be the best at scoring goals every single season, but it is going to be defensively solid, only conceding 22 goals. Samuel Eto comes in with 38 goals, what a player he was. Eden Hazard, again, an absolute baller, 7.31 with the highest average rating. Ramirez covered, if we remember him, with 23 assists, and Gary Cahill picking up a 95% pass completion. Now, going over to the Data Hub, we are going to feature in four of these stat lines. Obviously, Tottenham are going to get the most points per game. We do get the most shots at 584, the fewest shots against at 245, the fewest conceded at 22, and also the most clean sheets coming in at 20. But the big question on my mind, before we get into the Data Hub, is what does this Tottenham team look like. So let's go over and have a look. They've got Andre Villas Boas obviously in charge, and they have got Soldado, Lamella, Eriksen, Polinio, Chiriches, Walker, Dawson, Vertonghen. I mean, I remember all these players, but how have they won the league? Absolute beyond me, that really, really is. And going over to this date tab, we are going to look at just over, or just over, just under two goals a game at 1.95. So still enough to get the job done, as we're only conceding 0.58 every single game. Just over 15 shots on this occasion, maintaining above a 90% pass completion, and a tackle win ratio, not the best of the best, but an average 74. And then over to one of the teams you probably think about when you think of Mourinho. That is going to be FC Porto, but we enjoyed a treble winning season, being the Portuguese Premier League, the Portuguese League Cup against Braga, and the Super Cup against bitter rivals Benfica. We scored 107 goals in the league and conceded only 13, and it is going to be Gontzi Sal, a fantastic player in FM. If you're not playing as Porto, sign him, because he's an absolute baller, got the most goals, the most assists, and obviously, therefore, the highest average rating. And we were one game off going invincible, and that loss is going to be against... 
Benfica. Of course it is. 30 wins out of a potential 34. We're not going to turn our nose up at that, though. Team stats, we are going to be fairly dominant, featuring in seven of them. The fewest conceded, absolutely clear of everyone. The most clean sheets at 25. The most dribbles made at 625. The fewest shots against at 172. So defensively, I cannot fault us at all. We are absolutely incredible. Shots for 677. Not the highest I've seen, but still fairly decent. Goal scoring, clear of everyone. And of course, most points per game. We'll take that as well. Now going over to this data hub, we are going to look at over three goals on this occasion. 3.15. So we love to see that. Only 0.5. 3-8 conceded. Now, I know Porto are a very good team in this league. Before I see the comments, but we have got to take into account there are also a couple of other teams in here that could have taken this off us. Sporting, obviously Benfica, and a couple of other teams which sometimes cause an upset. Getting on for 20 shots every single game just by points one falling under the 90% pass completion and on this occasion a 78% tackle win ratio. And lastly, probably the other team you think of when you think of Mourinho, Real Madrid, of course. Spanish First Division champions, we're going to take that. Spanish Cup against Barcelona and the Super Cup against Barcelona and obviously the league. So we've done the treble over Barcelona. The only disappointment is going out to Leipzig of all teams in the round of 16, but I'm not going to turn up anything. Not going to cry about winning the treble. We've got to take that. It's a fantastic season with zero signings. 87 goals scored in the league. And on this occasion, not the best defensively, but we were second place. So it's okay. It got the job done. Vinici Vinicius? Vinicius Junior comes in with 16 goals tied with Rodrigo and Hosselu. Valverde picks up the highest average rating. And we have got one, two, three, Four players all joint with 10 assists, so that's very interesting to see as Rudiger maintains a 95% pass completion. A very good season as we win 30 games out of a potential 38, draw four, and therefore obviously lose the other four games. Team stat-wise, we are going to feature in a fair few. That is going to be five. It's actually going to be Real Sociedad, who um, were the best offensive team. Very interesting to see. Most dribbles made at 735. The fewest shots against at 173. The most shots for at 670. 17, the most goals at 87, and obviously, 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 can't seem to talk today, Um, 2.47 when it comes for the most points per game. Now, of course, going over to the data hub, we've got something to discuss. 2.29 goals per game, so still a fair bit over two, way under a goal conceded, that is definitely for sure, at 0.47, over 16 shots every single game, a tackle win ratio of 81.63, and of course, that pass completion, the best has ever been, at 90.4. Nine. Now, of course, going over to that squad, we are going to go ahead and have a little look. We're going to filter by the goals first, and that is going to be a, a variety of players. 16, 16, and 16 from Hosselu Rodrigo and Big Vinicius coming in. 13 for Valverde, Luka Modric with eight, six for Camavinga, six for Alaba. It's a real across-the-board effort from every single player, and the same story goes for the assists as well. So I'm absolutely buzzing to bring this to you because we are seeing a variety of different assisters and goal scorers. Now, this is not going to be the highest highest goal scoring tactic you're ever going to play with from this channel or from any other channel you see it's Mourinho tactic I've kept it as realistic as possible he is not known for winning games 7-8 nil is he he's a very gritty manager that gets the job done as we done with all four teams. We'll show this game because it's quite funny. Ipswich Town, my local team, playing Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final on the old database and a 5-1 win. So Ipswich got a little bit battered, to be honest. Eto over the top into one Matter. What a player he was. And actually, Eto gets that goal. He sort of runs in front of Matter's shot. Eto with a ball into the box, into David Luiz. I miss watching him play. What a player he was. To be fair to Ipswich, though, they did get one goal. Not on this occasion. It was Lampard. Plays it into Hazard, into Ramirez, and a little bit of ticky tack coming out from us there. A beautiful goal, a very scenic goal, if you so will. Essien back into Mata on the right-hand side, into Ramirez, touch inside, and... That is a rocket of a finish. I believe it's just to get a goal here. They do. Cowie into the box, into Smith. A bit of a bullet header, to be honest. Can't really expect much more from Petr Cech there. Hazard gets it out on the left, into Ramirez, drives it back inside, into Eto. Nothing he could do. It's a very dominant win, and a game we definitely deserve to win. I shoot the semi-final. This is the final of that FA Cup. Ashley Cole, into Mikel, into Hazard, wins it back. And a beautiful finish, but an injured McGregor inside of 24 minutes as Hazard just running at everyone. Nothing they can do. Going alone, cutting it back into Ramirez. And Ramirez was absolutely nuts in this database. He really, really is. And I believe this last goal has actually gone down as an own goal. <laughs> Ashley Cole down the left and yeah. It's a bit of a stinker. 
But of course, now to your favourite part of the video, that is going to be the tactical breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to like and also be sure to subscribe. There's over 70% of you guys that haven't already. It's completely free and it means the absolute world. We are going to go over three different variants today. A default variant, an attacking and a defensive variant. Now, if you do wish to join the other 2,000 people, you can do so by clicking the link in the description and going over to the Patreon where you get access to all three of these tactics. You get early video and early tactic release. You get priority in the rebuild and tactic requests. You get one-on-one -on -one tactical help at any time you want it. And also, there's going to be a giveaway which happens every single month, sometimes twice. So definitely go over and check it out. We get a nice little audience over there and the community is great. But let's go over and talk about these player roles then. So it is going to be a goalkeeper simply on the default. I do want to say I've kept this as realistic as I personally can think. Now, some of these positions, I would say for results wise, you can change. So when I get to them, I will say if you're going for more meta based, I will advise that as we go through. But the goalkeeper, we are going to keep obviously on defend. The fullback on the right is going to be on support on cross more often. Dribble more, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And on the left-hand side, that is going to be replicated. So very simple, very common, and not too hard to copy at all. And it gets the job done very efficiently. In the middle, we've got two, or we've got one, sorry, ball-playing defender, who is simply going to be on defend on the default instruction. And to partner him, a central defender, who is going to be on tackle harder, who's going to be the more aggressive one of the two, coming out and putting in the challenges. And I think we need that in this team. We really do. In the middle is going to be the anchor, simply on defend, on the default, no additional instructions needed. A box-to-box -box goes to the left-hand side of the midfield on shoot more often and also get further forwards. Now, on this role, I didn't tell him to stay wider because we've got a fullback that is going to be out there anyway and obviously a winger also. So we don't really need him focusing on playing out wide. Obviously, we had an inside forward, for example. That is something you could do. Next to him is going to be a Mozala, simply on the supportive duty. On the default, on the right-hand side, a default inside forward. No, I've not forgot to put instructions on. This is simply the best way that I personally could replicate the system, and it worked really, really well. On the left-hand side, now I've added this on. Um, it is optional, to be honest. Depends on how good your fullback is. But we've got a winger on support, but I am going to tell him to cut inside with the ball, because then this fullback, who obviously is going to be progressing up the field, isn't going to be colliding with him too much. And lastly, is going to be the complete forward on attack on shoot more often. Now, if you do want to go down a more results-based theme and not 100% realism, you could whack in an advanced forward here because complete forward doesn't, al it doesn't always get as many goals as what I see an advanced forward get. And I do feel an advanced forward would work very well in this system. So team instructions all based off a fluid counter-attack on the positive. That is right, the positive mentality. And we are going to talk through them. This is going to remain the same on standard or it will be set to fairly wide when you put in the tactical style. We're going to go with focus play down the left and also the right-hand side while playing out from the back. That is right. Not passing to space selected on this variant, but stay tuned. That could change. We're going to go with shorter on the passing directness and slightly higher when it comes to the tempo. And lastly, it's going to be very simple. Run at defense because again, we are a counter-attacking team and of course the mix crosses, but this pretty much resembles your average counter-attacking experience. So probably to be expected. In transition, we're going to keep it very, very, very simple. It's going to be counter. That is the game plan. And of course, a little bit of counter pressing. Lastly, it's going to take a little bit of a change, but this is actually going to be as what it is. The standard defensive line with that mid block line of engagement. Now you could argue, and it's a very good argument that you can have the low block line of engagement. But although I am going for pure realism, I'm not going to release a tactic that doesn't get results. That's not what I'm about. So that is going to be a mid block with the standard defensive line. If you really do want to try the low line, then you can do so but trust me it's not pretty we're going to go with the more often on the trigger press and also get stuck in oh boy do we have some fun with this madrid team drew bellingham out on the left hand side what a player he is by the way back inside into hosselu a player who we actually got playing as well which is very good to see obviously does he sort of plays that complete forward role quite well to be honest rodrigo down the right hand side driving it back in the middle and every single goal is so simple with this tactic we're not afraid to get bodies forward and get stuck in as it's gonna be nacho down the right hand side a great ball in Miranda what has happened there no idea shocking from Miranda a gift a goal into Valverde Vinicius on the left hand side a great ball through into Valverde nothing the keeper can do here we go then guys a seven goal thriller all of the seven goals go in our favor Varela out wide into Gonzi Sal into the bottom left and this guy honestly we know who he is I know everyone that plays FM knows who he is but you need to pick him up if you haven't already because he's absolutely incredible as a great couple of set pieces coming here back to back again you've got to get the set pieces as well there is going to be a training schedule 
and a set piece video coming out very, very shortly. But in the meantime, you can check out FM Scout as Gonzi Sal goes through again and tucks it in the same corner on obviously the other side of the field. Zhao Mario ball over the top into Gonzi Sal again, who is taken on every man. Ball inside and an even better finish. Maybe Charles in goal could have done a little bit better, but at this point he has conceded a five. Probably given up as Zhao Mario goes down the right hand side again into Gonzi Sal, who completes the hat trick, I believe, and gets a couple of assists and a very iffy but sort of convict and set piece. We're going to take it and. Yeah, we dominated that game as well. But now, of course, we are going to go over to the attack and variant, a tactic designed to push a little bit more with the goal sort of scoring theme of this tactic and go out and bang goals. Now, you obviously, you can get all three of these by joining the Patreon again, if you wish to do so. If not, I keep it in the video for you guys to simply click and copy. So that will always be there for you as well. But if you do, be sure to leave a like as well. But let's go over and talk about the player role. So in terms of the back line, the goalkeeper remains unchanged and the fullbacks and also the ball player and the central defender remains unchanged change and that's because we have changed so much more going forwards obviously you can see by the winger and the inside forward are both changed I didn't want to overcommit the tactic to the point where it's just a tactic that is all out attack but you concede so many goals I want to keep it still somewhat of a theme around Mourinho obviously it's a bit more attacking than your traditional Mourinho but it is still very very similar a deep line playmaker comes in instead of that anchor just to make more progressive passes the box to box Box to box? Box to box is going to be on support, on shoot more often, get further forwards and also move into channels. The Mazala is going to go on to attack on dribble more. The inside forward on the right is going to be on attack on shoot more often. And the winger on the left is now also going to be on attack, still on cut inside with the ball. And to finish it off, is going to be that complete forward on attack on shoot more often. Team instructions wise, a couple of changes. So it is still going to be the fluid counter attack on the attacking mentality. But there are going to be some changes. So it's still going to be fairly wide. Overlap left and overlap right. We're going to focus the play down the left and the right hand side as well. While we still remain playing out from the back. Still going to be shorter and a slightly higher tempo. But the real big change is going to be the addition of this be more expressive. Transition, one very simple but much needed change is going to be distribute quickly to play to anyone or not anyone, to the centre-backs, either of the centre-backs. Out of possession is going to be one big change again. We're actually going to push that line up a little bit, not the high press line of engagement, but we are going to keep the mid block but up the defensive line to higher and we're going to get stuck in and we're going to max out that trigger press to much more often. Now, of course, for you guys that are in a game, you're trying to defend a game out, you're trying to play for a point, whatever you're trying to do, you're trying to eliminate any goals going in, this is going to be the one you you need so we are going to go through it so the goalkeeper is going to remain the same the fullback is going to change a little bit on support on tackle harder and also mark tighter the central defender remains unchanged from the default so a defensive one on tackle harder the ball playing defender is simply going to be on the default and the fullback on the left is going to match the one on the right so two fullbacks on support both on tackle harder and mark tighter a lot of tight marking going on as we're now going to talk about as the anchor comes back in with two additional instructions tackle harder and mark tighter the box to box is going to be on support on tackle harder and also mark tighter and the Mazala gets scrapped for a bit more of a risk-free central midfield player on support on tackle harder and mark tighter so we are really going to be man marking the opposition and it's so frustrating if any of you remember when Mourinho was manager of Manchester United this is what he'd do a lot with under Herrera man mark players take him out of the game on the right hand side is going to be the inside forward simply on the default and the left hand side is going to be that winger who goes back to exactly the same but cut inside with the ball and to finish it off the complete forward gets changed from attack to support to be a little bit deeper on shoot more often the instructions again the custom counter-attack fluid style on the balanced the balanced mentality and it is going to be a little bit different so we are going to pass the ball into space we're going to focus the play down the left and the right hand side while still playing out from the back but this is where we take a little bit of a lower tempo sort of style so we're still going to be shorter we're still going to have you know the run at defense but we're going to lower the tempo down to standard and it is Mourinho we're going to time waste and honestly if you're in a game in the last five minutes max it out you're playing as Mourinho you got to do the dark arts in transition very simple very effective counter press and counter lastly out of possession the lower defensive line the mid block line of engagement more often and of course get stuck in. And that is going to give you guys three variants of Mourinho's 4-3-3 Chelsea. By far one of the most fun tactics I've made of recent times because I simply love the manager. Absolutely incredible guy. And honestly, not necessarily the most fun to watch, but he gets the results. If you guys have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like for me or Mourinho and be sure to subscribe as well and keep the comments coming on any future tactics you want to see. There's a big list, but I'm now back home. I'm now working on them and we are getting through them. I'll see you boys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.